Today we'll be talking all things babies and toddlers at Disneyland. Now I know many throw shade at this topic because they say, oh, they won't remember it, don't waste your money on the babies at Disneyland, blah, blah, blah. The truth is, I cherish all of my memories I have with my little ones at Disneyland. In fact, I got all choked up a couple of times editing this video because the memories came flooding back to me. But if you're not a hater and you're planning on taking your little ones to Disneyland, then this is absolutely for you. I'll tell you everything you need to know and then some. Plus a little bonus footage at the end of this video for your little ones to watch. So let's get started. Okay, let's get right to it. The first thing you need to know is kids under the age of three are free. They don't need a ticket, so don't even worry about it. I often tell my friends to go right before their kid's third birthday. That way they're still free, but they're starting to become that age where uh, they love exploring and they're curious and they're really getting into the characters and some of the movies. So that's my little tip for that. Otherwise, if your child is older than three or older, you need to purchase a ticket and it would be under the children's ticket prices, which is slightly less than the adult ones. Let's talk all things strollers now. Strollers, baby wearing, um, any way that you're gonna carry your little ones around because of course they're not going to walk that whole time. If you're bringing a stroller into the park, there's a couple of rules that you need to know about first. To ride any of the trams or shuttles that go from any of the parking lots, you must remove your child and fold up your stroller first. The same goes for the train inside of the park as well. There's stroller parking everywhere in the park, but a cast member can move it at any time to make room for other strollers or for better crowd control. I suggest putting something on your stroller that makes it stand out to you at first glance so when you come off of a ride or out of a restaurant you can quickly identify your stroller even if it's been moved. Also, wagon strollers of any kind, any style are no longer allowed in the parks. Uh, they will stop you at security and ask you to leave it, so don't bring it. You of course can rent the strollers at the building next to the front gates at Disneyland entrance, um, but they are pretty bulky and hard. Uh, plus they're $18 a day to rent a single stroller and $36 a day for a double, so I just don't know if the value is really there for me. Instead, I suggest getting a lightweight, easy to fold stroller that has a good sized hood for sun and rain protection but also has a cup holder and a little storage basket underneath so you can um, put your jackets and your bags, things that you might not want to hold on to while you're moving through the parks. For about two years, we used a Jeep umbrella style stroller and it worked really good. It lived a lot of life. We took it to a lot of airports and it did a lot of days in Disneyland. It really held up. Um, I loved how lightweight it was and easy to move around. Yeah, it was a good little stroller. We more recently got this Baby Joy uh, lightweight baby stroller. It's a little bit heavier than just your typical umbrella stroller. I really loved it. The angle of the back is a little bit weird, but the thing that I really love about it is the single hand trigger that you use to fold up the stroller. It's so easy to travel with. It's not too incredibly heavy, but it's really comfy for the babies. It has a couple of different um, reclining settings and settings for the legs so I really like it. Of course there's many other options out there just make sure that it's not too bulky because you will be pushing that thing around in the parks all day also they need to fit the size requirements of 31 inches by 52 inches um, to even be able to enter the parks with the stroller. And I'd also say don't bring anything too expensive because it's gonna get spilled on I mean, I've never had anything stolen, but you will be parking it in a sea of other people's strollers. You never know. 
And I'm sorry to say this, but the one stroller that I suggest not getting is those cheapy Mickey and Minnie Mouse umbrella strollers you see everywhere. Those guys fall apart really fast. Uh, they're not very comfy. The sun visor is terrible. It's just that one's not worth the money. And yes, we are those parents that got a baby leash for our youngest because she is a wiggle wart. And we knew she wasn't going to hang out in the stroller the whole time. We found really cute Minnie and Mickey Mouse um, harnesses on Amazon. I'll leave a link to that and any of the other strollers or products I mentioned today in the description box below the video. So you can check out any of these things if you're interested in them. And the last thing I want to mention is baby wearing. Of course, I'm a big fan of baby wearing when they're little. Um, but one thing to consider when going to Disneyland and baby wearing is the weather. It does get really toasty wearing those little babies against your body. Um, so it might be a little bit more appropriate for say a colder weather time of year. And just remember sun protection for any parts of their bodies that are exposed. Have them wear a hat or some sunblock on their arms or legs. Next is knowing those quiet places you can go to get away from the crowds, the noise, the heat, whatever it is that can be overwhelming your little one. Over between Matterhorn and It's a Small World, there's a little raised patio that oftentimes isn't very busy for most parts of the day, except during parades. And then there's also a little patio that goes down the middle of the bay there that has tables and chairs for dining, but like nobody knows it's there. And so there's hardly anyone there ever. And it's a really nice kind of quiet nook to go to. The next and my personal favorite is the Main Street Cinema. Now this is a toss up because you can sometimes get people going in there and letting their little ones run around and scream in there, which is fine. Uh, you can do whatever you want in there, but if you can get it to yourself or almost to yourself, it can be a really lovely place to sit in the dark. They have the old school original Mickey Mouse uh, cartoons playing, which is can kind of be noisy but it can kind of be white noise ish too i have rocked my baby to sleep many a times in this theater um and then it also has benches and so once you've rocked them to sleep you can actually hang out in there for a little while it can also be kind of a secret little nursing area too that you can feed your babies if you need more of a dark personal space just down the street, you'll find the Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln Theater. You can either go in there and actually watch the show, which isn't too loud or crazy. It's pretty calm. You have theater seating. Or you can even just go in the lobby area where they have benches, and it's where they put a lot of displays for what's going on in the parks right now. It's a pretty quiet museum-type setting, so it's a really nice place to go and chill with babies. Also, there's a couple of quiet little nooks down in Pooh Corner over in Critter Country. It's nicely shaded. There's a few benches. There's not a ton of rides back there. You can grab yourself a little treat from um, Winnie the Pooh's little treat corner there and sit and rest with your baby. Now, DCA isn't overly friendly for toddlers or babies in my opinion but it does have a couple of good little rest areas. The first one is in the Hollywood back lot stage area as long as there's not any live performances going on back there there's rows and rows and rows of benches in the shade where you can go and sit and eat as a family feed your baby take a rest and then over in cars land if you go into the back end of flo's v8 cafe they have a lot of seating back there both indoors and outdoors that again is away from the crowds and then you have a fun view of the Cars ride with its red rocks and the cactuses and it's got that like 1950s diner vibe. It's a really fun place to go and chill if you need to. Lastly, I have to mention the Fantasyland Theater. If there's no shows going on that day or around the time that you're looking for a place to go, that area is completely dead. We've had full-on family sit-down picnics there with not a soul in sight before. Um, because there's no reason for anybody to go up there unless there's a show going on. So if you need to, you can totally go up there and have the entire area to yourself. It's really nice. 
The next tip is a big one. Use the baby centers. This is a free service to all Disney Parks guests. There's one baby center in each park. The first one in Disneyland is between the Plaza Inn and where the Main Street shops start. It's kind of behind the Main Street Photo Supply Company. And the California Adventure one is just right behind, well, it's between Cars Land and behind the Ghirardelli uh, Square shop. In these baby centers, you'll be greeted by a cast member who will ask you how they can help you and point you to the service that you need. In these uh, places, they have padded changing tables, diapers and wipes for cells, small toilets for potty training little ones, uh, private stalls for nursing or feedings, uh, kitchen space with microwaves and sinks, and even bottle warmers, and a place for like food prep, high chairs and tiny tables, um, and then just like a quiet, calm place to get away from crowds or weather or whatever. Uh, it really is like the best kept secret. Of course, we have to talk about characters when we're talking about taking little ones to Disneyland. They're all over the place. One of the best ways to see what characters are going to be out and about that day and where they're going to be located is going on the Disneyland app and looking under characters and it will show you a list of all the characters that will be out in both parks that day. I highly suggest showing your little ones videos or pictures of what the characters and even what the rides look like at Disneyland beforehand so they know what to expect. It's something a little bit familiar so they're not completely surprised by it or scared. Never try to force your little one to go see a character if they're not ready. Some days they might be totally okay with the character and the next day they might completely fall apart. I have experienced that for myself. They often have a protocol where the character will cover their eyes and turn away from the little one if it's scaring them too much. They're very used to this. They know how to deal with it. Just let your little one warm up to the idea if they are feeling nervous about it. I would also suggest um, video recording their encounter with the little characters, especially if it's their favorite character. And most cell phones will have a place where you can take pictures within the video so you're taking a video and pictures at the same time because I have had moments where I've only taken video or only taken picture and wish I had done both so that's my little uh, tip for you today on that. The best places to find and catch characters are both main streets and both parks Fantasyland, Critter Country, Toontown when it opens uh, March 8th Pixar Pier, and Avengers Campus. The characters will always have a cast member accompanying them, letting you know where the line starts and where it ends, and if they are allowing any more people in the line, please respect these cast members and listen to their directions so there isn't any misunderstandings and missing out on your fun little character experience. Now the best place to catch a whole bunch of Disney princesses all at once is going to the Royal Hall. It's kind of to the front and over to the side of the castle just off of Main Street. I suggest going early in the morning. There they won't tell you which princesses you'll see but you'll see at least two to three princesses each time you go and you walk down a hallway and each time you go round a corner you meet a new princess it's a nice intimate setting you get a little bit more time than you usually would if you just run into a character on um, the street or walking by or whatever this is where a lot of people will pop on that princess dress really fast to get that awesome photo op it's a really fun experience and then also just you know keep your eyes open chill in areas you never know when you're gonna come across that really rare experience like when we came across Tiana on um, the Mark Twain riverboat and my daughter along with a couple of little girls got to hang out with her the whole ride and chat with her it was such an, a magical experience um, I we will never forget it it was so fun
let's talk about what those kiddos should be wearing because I've seen one too many very sad grumpy babies and little ones because they're just simply uncomfortable in what they're wearing. Cute costumes are a fun idea for photo ops but not for the entire day. Bring a change of clothes for those spills or if they get wet. Consider bringing jammies if you're staying late. You can change them in those baby centers. Um, weather appropriate clothes, just make sure that if it's going to be hot that they're dressed appropriately for that. If it's going to be cold, bring layers, um, sunblock, and of course walking shoes. Nobody thinks about putting good walking shoes on their little ones, but if they are going to be doing any walking at all, it is so helpful for them to have socks and good walking shoes on so they aren't getting blisties or their feet aren't hurting. Instead of buying those massive, heavy Minnie Mouse and Mickey Mouse ears in the park that are super expensive, I usually just pick up a cute little pair off of Amazon. That way I'm not super heartbroken if they get lost or broken or my little one rips it off the second, you know, we put it on after the quick photo op. It's not going to break my heart because I didn't spend $40 on it. It's fun to find matchy, cutesy outfits, but just overall make sure that they're going to be comfortable, they're going to breathe well, there's not going to be any extra itchiness going on, or it's an outfit that can evolve throughout the day. My girls started out with tutus one day and, you know, by midday they're down to their little shorts and their t-shirts. There's nothing wrong with that. Because the last thing you want is a wardrobe malfunction ending your day at Disneyland. Disneyland is the land of the churro and the $20 snack. For littles, I suggest bringing in some of their own favorite snacks with you into the park so you know, no matter what, they'll have something they like or can eat during a grumpy moment. Of course, all of the eateries technically are kid-friendly. Even the super fancy ones have pretty awesome kid menus. Uh, you just need to know your littles and know what's going to fly and what they won't try at all. So, several quick serve places offer something called a toddler meal, where for $4.99 you can get a mac and cheese, a milk or water, and an applesauce. And it ends up being a pretty perfect little meal for them. Places like the Hungry Bear Galactic Grill and Boardwalk Pizza have these little toddler meals going on a lot of the places that are just quick grab-and-go places. We do have some places that are our favorites that usually make everyone happy, adults and kiddos alike, both because of the atmosphere and food options. First would be the Jolly Holiday. It serves a good classic American food uh, with a healthy amount of baked goods and pastries as well. Uh, they serve breakfast, lunch, and dinner with the kids meal and the jelly holiday combo being a pretty solid quick meal with you know pretty good value uh, you can see parades and fireworks from the patio of this place as well as a live piano player throughout the day so it's a really fun place to eat at the next would be the carnation cafe it's also on main street and it serves up one of the best breakfasts found in disneyland they have those infamous mickey mouse waffles really tasty cold overnight oats that our little one is absolutely obsessed with. Um, fun little coloring projects for your little ones to do while they wait. They serve breakfast, lunch, and dinner, but they are a sit-down place so you do have to make reservations ahead of time and I suggest making them as early as possible, especially for breakfast. Speaking of breakfast, if you are going to splurge on some food with your little ones at Disneyland and you know that they aren't going to be intimidated by characters, I would highly suggest the Minnie and Friends Breakfast Buffet. Um, you will spend a little bit more of a premium price to get in, but it is a buffet. It's all you can eat and the entire time you're sitting in this beautiful building and characters are coming up to your table, greeting your little ones, chatting with them, you know, taking pictures. It is a really fun, really special experience. Um, I'm so glad we did it and I would totally do it again. It's most definitely worth the splurge. You do need reservations for this breakfast. I suggest making them as soon as you can and as early in the day as possible so that you can still get a good amount of morning park in. 
Red Rose Tavern is another tasty place where you can get good breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Good people watching. It's where all the characters enter into fantasy land, so you get to see a lot of characters walking past, little bands going. You can see the fireworks from that place, but I would suggest if your child's sensitive to loud noises, not doing it there because you are right in the middle of the fireworks. Um, anyway, it's a super tasty place. Highly recommend. At the Plaza Inn, you can get a good value out of the fact that the portions of the fried chicken meal are so large, it's very easy to share with your little ones. And in DCA, there's not the best options for littles, um, but Flo's V8 has a great vibe, fun views, a classic burger and fries place with tasty milkshakes. But, of course, all of this only matters if you have room in your tummies after all of those treats because it's not a day at Disneyland if we don't leave with hurdy tummies, ice cream all over our clothes, and a smile on our sleepy little faces. Who doesn't love a parade? and Disneyland's are the best, so they are a must do with your little ones. They have parades going most days in Disneyland proper, going down Main Street, starting from It's a Small World and all the way down to the buildings by Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln. Most days they will do two shows, one in the afternoon and another one in the evening. Just make sure to check your Disneyland app for exact times. You don't miss out on any of the fun parades that they have. Fantasyland, of course, is a per perfect place for little ones to play and be entertained. One of our favorite entertainment spots in Fantasyland is the Royal Theater. In the Royal Theater, you can either choose to sit on the carpeted area or wooden benches where you get to watch reenactments of classic Disney movies. <laughs> One attraction that always gets looked over, but is a must-do with our families and especially with our little ones, is the Tiki Room. You can find the Tiki Room at the entrance of Adventureland, where you can grab yourself a Dole Whip, sit down, and enjoy a show put on by serenading animatronic birds. It's a blast. Here come the girls, Madame and Monsieur, introducing the lovely ladies of the ensemble. Of course, you can take a raft over to Pirate's Island, where little ones can really get their wiggles out, running down the trails, up and down bridges. Just make sure that you keep an eye out on them, because there are a lot of places where they can get lost. All of these attractions, though they're kid-friendly, do require parental supervision still, so don't think you're going to be dropping your kids off and taking a break. And another underrated attraction, in my opinion, is found on the Rivers of America, right by Thunder Mountain Railroad. It's the Mark Twain Riverboat, a steam-powered boat that just glides along the river. It gives you a fun little tour around the middle parts of Disneyland. The best part is there's plenty of space for your little ones to move around in. Uh, it moves slow enough where it's not like dangerous to walk around on the boat. Sometimes you can catch characters on it. It's you out of the crowds and it takes you back in time. For the kids that never stop moving, pop over to Tomorrowland 
at night where they can join dance parties with their favorite characters. And over in DCA, the Disney Junior Dance Party is the best. Not only is there dancing, but there's bubbles, confetti, Mickey Mouse, and your kiddo may even get a chance to see their own face on the big screen. And next door, in the animation building, you'll find Turtle Talk with Crush where kids get to interact with Crush from Finding Nemo and learn all about sea life and turtles. In that same building, there's also the Animation Academy, where Disney artist teaches you how to draw characters. And then the Beast Library, where you can explore and find out which Disney character you are. Sometimes it's surprisingly accurate. And over at Pixar Pier, you can put some money on a game card so you can play carnival style games. A lot of them are very kid friendly, although the beanbag toss one is the hardest to win a prize. But they also have some games that are guaranteed to win a prize every time. There's one where they have little stars floating in the water and your little one can scoop up a star and whatever color is on it will decide what size of prize they get. So no matter what, they'll be walking away with a prize at the end of the game. Let's talk rides. Many rides in Disneyland are any age rides, although that doesn't necessarily mean they're appropriate for everyone. I suggest choosing your child's first, first ride or two wisely because the last thing you want to do is pick a very scary ride right at the beginning and make them terrified to ride anything else and then they don't trust you for the rest of the trip. So. Some good rides to start out with would of course be rides like Dumbo where you're just, you know, flying around in a little circle. I mean, it's a classic. And the Storybook Land Canal ride is a super sweet one once you get past the scary part of going into the whale's mouth. After that, it's nothing but miniatures and narration. And welcome to Storybook Land. My name is Ty. I will be your captain and storyteller aboard the Flora today. For your safety, we ask that you remain seated and please keep your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the boat at all times. And if you have little ones, please supervise them. We don't need our story taking any unexpected turns. <laughs> now, those who visit magical places often do so through the pages of a book. Okay. But those who visit a person, whether it be down a rabbit hole or with a little pixie dust, often find the journey to be a bit more magical. But it can sometimes be menacing. And it may seem as if we're the belly of Monstro the Whale, the same way let's swallow Pinocchio. We're actually being transported to the magical place of Storybook Earth. Like the magic in the planet to achieve that plus. That is just a big place of favorite of all Disney and continue to inspire storytelling to this day. Stories like the wind in the willows coming up to our left, where is your toad, mole, and rare all live together in this stately manner. Although you'll never catch them home as they're all on a crazy adventure to nowhere in particular. Speaking of Mr. Toads, it's a super fun ride because the kiddos feel like they're driving the car themselves. Just look out because you do crash into a train and get sent to HE Double Hockey Sticks. And as long as you can stifle your vomit long enough, the teacups is always a classic with kids. I never go on it. I make my husband go on it because he can handle the spinning. I don't mind taking the pictures though. Watch out for going on rides that have really long lines right from the get-go, like Peter Pan or if it's during the holidays, Haunted Mansion, because waiting in those long lines can be really hard and frustrating for little ones. And it can be exhausting trying to keep them standing in line in one place for too long. Of course, It's a Small World is an easy win with little ones. With its gentle ride, bright colors, catchy songs, and fun figures, in Adventureland, you have the Jungle Cruise for the lovers of all things animals and corny dad jokes. 
The Finding Nemo submarine ride is a fun magical ride as long as you are someone who doesn't suffer from claustrophobia. In Land you have Buzz Lightyear, Astro Blasters, and over in Kit Critter Country you have the Winnie the Pooh ride. Possibly one of the cutest rides that's ever existed. Here's a little sample of the sweetest ride in all of Disneyland. As soon as Toontown reopens up, you'll have the Roger Rabbit ride, which can be questionably a little bit scary in some places and a little intense for some, so you might want to think about this one a little bit before you take them on it. And you also have the Gadget Go Coaster, which will be a little bit more on the thrill ride side for, again, those little ones that like to go a little bit faster and like the roller coasters. Um, this one does have a height requirement. It's not incredibly tall, but it is there. Most of the kid-friendly rides in Disney's California Adventure are going to be spinny rides. I'm just going to warn you right now, you have Jesse's Critter Carousel, which, you know, who can go wrong with an absolutely adorable carousel-type ride? You have Mater's Jamboree ride, which is kind of... A whippy spinny ride, I guess is how I would explain it. Um, in Pixar Pier, you have the emotional whirlwind ride. Again, it's just like your classic go around in circles, pretty similar to Dumbo type ride. I do suggest riding it at nighttime over the daytime though. And then the dancing cars ride, I can handle this one. It seems like it would be extra nauseating, but it's actually not too bad. It only spins a little bit and for a little bit, so I can do this one. And last but not least, you have Midway Mania, the Toy Story ride where you get to pop on those 3D glasses and journey through those arcade style games. Of course, there's more rides than these to go on with the little ones, but I would say these are the friendliest to start out with. We must talk about Rider Swap. When you have a little one that isn't tall enough for the big popular rides, you can Stroller Swap. This can usually be done on most of the rides that have Lightning Lane with them. Um, just go to the cast members at the entrance of the Lightning Lane and tell them that you need to stroller swap. They'll scan your tickets for the people who will wait with the baby. Usually up to about three people can go back onto the ride after. And then after the first people have ridden the ride and gone through the line, then you can go back and switch and all you'll do is go through the Lightning Lane um, part of the line instead, scanning your ticket in to enter. Luckily, there's usually little rides or shows you can do while you wait for the first group to go on the ride. I highly suggest deciding on a meetup place while doing stroller swaps so there's no confusion or getting lost. Okay, let's give you some of my quick bonus tips. Quick bonus tip number one is to stay close to the parks when you have little ones with you. This is so you can go back to your hotel in the middle of the day, give them a really good nap, maybe a cheaper lunch, get a little bit of pool time in, and then you can just go back to the park a little bit later on when it's not quite so hot, a little less crowded, 
They'll probably fall asleep in the stroller at some point and you can just enjoy yourself for the rest of the night. Next bonus tip is get those sweet hand cut silhouette souvenirs. They are absolutely worth it. You can find the shop on Main Street. It's teeny tiny. It's kind of by the crystal shop. Um, as long as there's somebody in there working, you should be able to make an appointment and get your little ones in there and it is so fun. The person will do a free hand cut out of your child's silhouette. It gets pasted on a little uh, cardboard card. You get two of them, you get both sides. It's only $11.99, which is a screaming deal for a Disneyland souvenir. Uh, you can add a frame to it. I think all in it's around $20 to $30 once you add a frame. It's still a really good deal. The experience itself is memorable, but then also just the sentimental nature of the souvenir is makes it extra, extra special. We have a couple of them of our oldest daughter, and it's really fun to see how she's grown throughout the years. Next, beware of the scary and intense stuff. Like I mentioned earlier, some of the rides kids can go on, the little ones, but they might be a little bit scary for them. Even ones like Pinocchio can be pretty creepy. Um, of course, Haunted Mansion and Pirates, it does have two little heel drops. Plus all of the skeleton parts can be a little bit scary at first. So just keep your little one's sensitivities in mind for that. Fantasmic is an absolutely awesome show and super fun to watch, but it does have some surprising intense moments, one in particular being a cannon being shot off in the pirate's part. Scares me every time. Also, there's a large fire-breathing dragon and a couple of fireworks and just a really intense part at the end, so just be aware. the fireworks can be a little bit intense for some kiddos. Um, if you need to, I would say stand further back on Main Street, kind of by where they have the American flag and the train station. That's the least uh, loud and intense spot to watch the fireworks. And lastly, to get those amazing shots of your kiddos in the park, remember to get down low and zoom in close. This helps get all of the little details but it also helps you bring yourself into their world you start seeing the magic through their eyes and seeing their perspective of how they're experiencing Disneyland for the first time those super far away shots where your kids and aunt in the middle of all the madness just isn't as personal or as fun as a good tight shot is all right that's it that's everything i have for you i hope this was a super helpful video i wished i had something like this when i was first taking our oldest to the parks if this was helpful for you if you liked it please consider giving it a like and even subscribing to my channel to get even more tips and tricks on your next Disneyland vacation. As promised, 
stick around to the very end of this video right after the send away so your little one can watch a fun compilation of all the Disney characters. Thank you again for watching and I hope to see you guys real soon. Bye bye. The first 
order will be watching you. All right then. Goodbye, Bye, citizen. citizen. Bye. Greetings, civilians. Greetings. Excellent. <laughs> Your allegiance seems misplaced. Uh oh, it's me. We've got eyes on you. <laughs> you high five? Good. Excellent. <laughs> I look at you and see potential. Ooh. I don't see that in everyone. <laughs> That's your advantage. <laughs> don't waste it. This way. Mm -hmm. Right there. Goodbye. Show me who. Show him who's on your sweater. <laughs> See, she's just a spy. <laughs> For the good guys. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 